Welcome everyone um, to Leaders Talk. My name is Markus, Markus Gottschalk, and I'm Managing Director of Change Leadership and Partners. My guest for today is Leif Sorensen, uh, and Leif is founder and CEO of Acti. Hello, Leif. Hello, hello. Hi, Markus. Thank um, you for the invitation. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. And, uh, and ACTI is an organization for game-based learning. And we will learn in a second more about ACTI, about game-based learning. And um, But before we do that, um, please allow me to say why we have live today uh, and ACTI and why we are having this um, webinar. And, and that is because gamification, let me just jump right into it. Gamification, simulation, uh, and game-based learning is, as we all know, dealing with leaders learning, uh, uh, super important, uh, yeah, super important elements for learning and for leader development. Um, why is that? And I can speak uh, of experience. We have high engagement. Uh, participants just love it. Uh, they're into the material and we change behaviors and which I found outstanding. Uh, so it's not just a consumption. People are engaged. Uh, they remember um, and um, yeah, highly active and we're changing behavior with that. Why that is, so maybe live you can uh, shed some light uh, um, uh, on that later, so that would be great. So everyone who is in HR leadership development or who is involved in uh, leaders and employee learning and development, um, I hope that this uh, short interview today is valuable to you. Life. Should we just start? And of Let's course, we, we, I think you have first to give us a bit of an idea. What is Acti? Uh, who are you? Um, what are you guys doing? Okay, I, I, um, I, I'm kind of those persons who's very much uh, thinking about myself. So I will start there. Uh, um, um, I, I'm life. I'm basically there are two things that are important in the journey for me in terms of getting into learning, getting into the games. And I think that also tells something about me. I'm actually educated as a tailor. Uh, I'll come back to why that is important, but that that's one of the keys for me into learning. It, it might sound strange now, but let me return in a second. Uh, the second one is that I suffer from dyslexia. Uh, that means that I'm, I'm not good at reading and writing. I've never been. My whole family is. Um, uh, but I'm still a very much a mind person. I'm a brain person. Uh, I read everything I can read. My kids, my wife has a PhD. So we are not a family that suffers from uh, from this uh, small bias we have in our brains. But it has been part of my journey into learning. Um, because having those two issues coming from a very practical background as a tailor into uh, a mindset, it means that I have a great respect for the practical side of learning. I know that learning is played out in a practical reality. It's not played out on a desk. It's played out amongst people in different settings. Uh, and that respect comes out of my practical background. And the other thing is that uh, being a dialectic person has always made me being interested in other ways of consuming knowledge and content. And games were just like mind blowing opening to me. So thinking, OK, I can actually learn about this uh, theory in a very practical way by playing a game, getting to know elements of the theory. It simply made me uh, understand theory in a total different, uh, faster way than I was normally used to. And I just simply saw uh, uh, that as a great advantage. And that made me think, why is that not applied everywhere? Why is university full of books when there is actually this very great shortcut that includes my mind, it includes even the teamwork. So that's basically me uh, uh, on, uh, uh, and I haven't said that, it's it's my whole life. I've been doing this since 2009. I, I simply love my field. I spent my whole life and I have a very, very, very um, 
uh, daring, caring, uh, uh, concerning uh, partner uh, and kids who accept that I spent so much time on this subject. I mean, can you imagine yeah. listening to me every day uh, at it's dinner? It's an amazing story, life. It's an amazing yeah. entry uh, to uh, workplace learning and the practical side of it. Um, yeah, show us what you have and what yeah. ACTI is about. Yeah, so so uh, briefly on ACTI, ACTI is a game-based uh, platform. Maybe I should share my screen and, and just take you through a couple of slides. So yes. while I speak, I won't necessarily go through the slides. I will just speak so you can choose to be bored of my voice and looking at the slides, or you can choose to listen to my voice and be bored uh, uh, or not bored. Depends on where you are. But let me just briefly uh, go through. Basically, uh, ACTI is a, a gaming platform that has uh, a lot of uh, games on it, uh, uh, which is very interesting. There are now plus, it says plus 100. It's an old slide. It's actually 150. But the most important part think, is that yeah. it's actually- I'm not sure live, but I think you have to go on presenter mode somehow. I'm I seeing your thumbnails and I don't know if everyone can see that, but I see your- You see my mails, they are quite interesting too. I think on uh, presenter mode would be probably better uh, let me see the PowerPoint presenter mode. Yeah, I think I did that, but let me see. I'm probably just sharing the wrong screen. And that's another thing about being in tech, uh, being in games and tech. This issue that we are now encountering is always a thing in uh, using tech in learning. Uh, and, and somehow it will never, ever go away. It's going to be the same. If you want to use tech, you're going to live with the fact that you have human beings uh, controlling the tech and making mistakes. That's okay. Better. Back, That's back, better. Back, back to Acti. Basically, we are a gaming platform uh, uh, which has a lot of games, but there are two major things that differentiates Acti from a lot of other things out there. And that is we build on theory. So everything we do is centralized around a theory that people are learning when they play the game. So that's the one core thing I would like to say. This, the second core thing uh, uh, I would like to say is that you can actually customize whatever you see on the screen. And we have 400 of those uh, per year being published uh, into people's own environments. They're not going public, all of them like out to everybody, but people are designing their own games and they're quite complicated, some of the games. And let me just briefly um, uh, touch on how, how a game is actually looking like. We have basically five game boards uh, and five engagement tools that are not games, but the five game boards are targeting, uh, you have to think of them as a monopoly board. So on the screen, you have five different monopoly boards that you can choose from. So your game will be on one of those uh, monopoly boards. Uh, once you can use one, you can use all of them. And, but the most, the most uh, 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 and then, oh, okay, yeah, that's also important. When you get into the platform uh, as a user of games, you have a statistics over your session. So how many times are you playing this game with somebody? So as a consultant, you can see the statistics on the usage of your environment. And this is just an example of my environment. Uh, so that is like one side of using games. The other side of using games, which is, which is important for, for, the, uh, for the engagement of the learner who's actually being presented with games is the data. The dashboard that you get as a player is this dashboard. You come in, you log in. If you've played the game before, you can see your own uh, profiles on that specific theory that you have been playing about with. Can, so I, means, can, I, can I stop you for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, so stop, let, but... let me summarize what I have understood. So first of all, you design games. Uh, so your clients come to you uh, with a request and you design various games. That's what I understood. Secondly, you have a tracking mechanism, so you are able in HR or whoever uh, is, is, is your client can track what has been done, played. Um, and then the third thing is what I understood is that it is data which is played back to the participants in the form of a dashboard. And in the data, we will find many information we can use then later for development. That's exactly, except for one thing that I was a little bit too fast about was that you actually, we don't design games. The clients are designing the games. Uh -huh. we, we, we actually started out by designing games, but it imposes one big problem to learning, which is that, that 
uh, that allowed us to be the clever ones. So uh, can you imagine that you come into a big company and then you think this is a great way to learn about change? And then this company says, yeah, but this is not how we want to do it. We want to use this model. So we we kind of understood from, from 2014 that we could not be the clever ones. We had to yeah. hand that role to the clients. And, and, live, and live, we know any, sorry for interrupting, we know any other that our clients are more clever than we are. That's all right. But how do you bring your client to design their own game? Sorry, you lost me. Can you explain that? Yeah, basically the whole system behind the system, you can make a copy of any of the games. So simply, I like to play the, the, the CRM game, which is our most popular games, played thousands and thousands of times all over the world, translated into 17 languages. So very often people think this is a cool game. I want to use this game, but it has a slightly different, it has to go into a slightly different situation in my company. Mm -hmm. What they do is that they simply make a copy of the game and then they can start customizing it. They can customize text. They can customize the theory within the game. Uh, they can so you set it customized and you make it your own. So you have a template and you make it your own. All right. Okay. Exactly. So so that option is there and it, it's it's done on the system. So it's a very easy, it's not even, you don't have to, if you can write an email, you can do a game basically. Nice. Good. So, so that that is uh, that is that is basically what it is. But but we haven't like gone to the part where where we actually discuss. So, how does a game look like when people are playing? This is just a screenshot from a session where it's a sales uh, group where you have a lot of groups who's playing, and each one of the small boats you see on the screen there is representing a team who is playing against another team. And on the right hand side, you can see brown team is playing against white team, and you can see their score. So this is the facilitation mode that you can bring on the screen, uh, and you can then discuss the, th the choices people have made, the theory they have been used, how they have been used it where they're satisfied with it as a consultant so we also uh, put a, a tool where you can actually open up discussions even deeper and that's where the actual learning is about uh, using the game in itself learning wise is just a fun way of consuming content and ideas but the actual reflection is still done by a consultant uh, online or in class so um, uh, um, to understand that, oh, and I saw you had another picture here. So you can do it online and you can do it offline in a classroom setting. And here you, I can see the board. Exactly. Okay. So, and I understood also that one of your elements is competition. So uh, groups play against each other. Exactly. Yeah. So so uh, groups play against each other. That means that you inside the group have uh, organized it in a way where in this situation that we have on the screen now, you have three people in the group and you can see that one of them is having a crown. So that crown symbolizes that you have a leader of the group who is able to implement. But before that person can implement, they need the input from the rest of the teams. So even though if you if you compete team against a team inside the team, each team member have to suggest an option that they then discuss, and then that will be their um, part of the uh, kind of the, the the choice that they add into the game, and they will be measured on that choice uh, that they have discussed and agreed on to be implemented as a team. So there's okay. a lot of discussion or a lot of options to discuss what is happening before. And live for uh, the listener and uh, the viewer here who don't know Acti Change. So Acti Change is basically, can you or just do it yourself? I mean, I don't have to explain Acti Change. Just in one, three sentence, what is Acti Change and how does it work? Acti Change is one of the game boards, one of the monopoly boards. Uh, uh, where you can, where you um, are going through a process. It doesn't have to be a change, but it's very often a change process. But it's basically going through a process, like you go from field one to 24 in the game. And the whole idea is getting these people that you meet in the game, you you see them as bubbles here. Uh, yeah. uh, and th those are stakeholders that you need to manage in that process. And the way that you can see where the process is, is that you have a boat. Uh, and, and in this case, you can see that there are four people inside the boat and the whole idea is trying to get all of the people inside the boat as a symbol of them being with you in the process moving through a change. Uh, and then you, of course, meet 
all types of obstacles in the games and people are reacting. They can also react with uh, being on uh, dif different resistant levels. And that is if you impose uh, an option, you say, okay, I'm going with this theory, with this option, you agree in the team, you implement that, then people in the game are reacting to your option. So, so what is the what is the game uh, what is the, the the magic here why is it so and I can say life it is a very successful um, simulation of change and 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 many companies including us we're using active change on a regular basis uh, with our clients so but what is the magic what is the why is it so yeah why are people so into it? Basically, it's a, it's a, I, I, when I have to be very um, uh, honest, like you ask me a very honest question, I like to give a very honest answer. Basically, it's a replacement of a PowerPoint slideshow. The difference is, if you have a PowerPoint slideshow, you have a consultant in front of that PowerPoint slideshow going through it, and then you, you have a, a group of people listening to what you're saying, a, a little bit similar to a video. So... That is one way of learning, but the thing that is difficult in the PowerPoint slideshow is to get people engaged. But by adding a game where you have options, you need to add your own ideas and concept of uh, what you think is a, a real thing to do here, what is the right thing to do here, uh, out of a specific description of a context. You engage people into a situation where they have to stand off for their opinions and ideas on what is the right way of solving this specific obstacle that I have in front of me right now. So. The trick is the magic powder is basically getting people involved, like right. really getting them involved, not being listening passively, tank them up with uh, uh, with content, but let them grasp the content by adding it to a real scenario, to a situation they recognize. Um, so that's the trick of the engagement in the gaming situation. So basically in a safe environment, you take them out of the role of the consumer and you put them into the shoes of decision makers, leaders, the one who can change the outcome of whatever you're doing here. Yeah, right. but but one, one other thing which is very often forgotten in learning when we discuss it in this way, we simply discuss it as what happens in the actual time lab where they are playing, which is, which is actually the least value of the learning, which is often forgotten. Uh, uh, the real value is basically happen when they leave that situation, when they leave the game, when they leave the session and modules and go back and try to implement what they have learned in that session. Mm -hmm. That point, using games and real life scenarios where you create something that they can relate to, you make what is in learning called as just transferring of that knowledge into a real life situation much easier because yeah. you have described a situation they can recognize and that also allows them to uh, take what is called as general knowledge leadership is is very much a general knowledge uh, which is uh, which is something that can be difficult and quite abstract to transfer into your own work life but by creating a specific practical situation you actually make it very easy or we make it very easy to allow players to transfer learning from games to something they already know because their brain is already thinking about where do I meet this situation? So yeah, next time they meet it, they're likely to draw on that experience. And I guess it's a very safe environment and you're implementing a language and then they can transfer and you can talk about their own case uh, in a very safe, yeah, in a very safe environment. Um, yeah, um, you know, look, now we are praising all of that. And I know we have a, a short interview today uh, and we have about 11 minutes left. Um, what is the shortcomings of Acti Learning? What should we not do? Or what should we watch out for? What is, especially for people from learning development, what, what yeah. is your... My advice is that uh, it, it's not related to games, it's related to technology. We need to take technology serious. That means that it's not because it's a game, it's not a free space. You do not become a great consultant by adding a game. A great consultant is a great consultant because that person understands what is happening in learning and technology is not going to, to help you there. 
So that was, that was addressed now to anyone who is training or who's facilitating ACT. So it's not just about technology, it's about what is behind and how you facilitate that. Okay, is there anything for maybe for the organizations who implement a, um, a, a game or an ACT like that? What would you say to them? I would say to them, you need to make sure that you extend the learning situation to be more than just the, the time lapse, the synchronic time lapse where they are playing, where they're listening to a PowerPoint person, where they have a consultant. You need to make sure that you activate the learning again after you have been within that synchronic time frame where they have done something. And games is a very powerful way of doing that. Imagining you have 20 people, if you can get five of them to play a short version of the same game, you have gained more value than if they didn't. So even leaving 15 behind, you have five who's doing more. That means high in the value, revisiting the learnings. That space is very under prioritized in any organization who's implementing uh, uh, learning. That space needs to be uh, uh, focused a, a lot more on. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be my biggest advice if you, uh, to, to L&D within companies. Okay. Um, Life, I'm, uh, what I learned is that you can de design your own. Uh, you can not only take the customer relationship management game, but you can also you know, uh, substitute it with different kind of topics. And uh, what, are, what do you think? What are the topics of the future? What are organization... Um, yeah, um, which topics are they they're, they're, they're facing or facing in the future? What can you see? I can see one one mega 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 trend that will hit us uh, gradually, but very soon very hard, is the green uh, impact uh, at companies. We've been uh, at Active. We've been focusing on this for the last year. We had a, a partner day where we invite all of our partners who's using the 2,000 people around the world, and uh, uh, they there we had a focus on how will this impact HR. And I can see now that that we are discussing about we know all of the some of the technical solutions, but HR do not know how are we going to support the managers, how are we going to support teamwork, how are we going to support uh, um, uh, any change within the organization that are related to uh, uh, the green agenda. And how, the, how can Acti help here? Yeah, one thing that we're doing, we're doing more than one thing, but one thing that we do is I'm um, just going to uh, move on to this slide because one thing that we've been looking at is like a meta model that we will add into any game, allowing any game to have a green model coming out. So when you talk about green changes, it, it, you're talking about changing the behavior, uh, but it, it's going to be related to any any theme. So even, even uh, implementing a new CRM system is going to be, you're going to ask, is this really the, the right uh, consumption of electricity, this new system that we have? Uh, is it really right that we get people to fly around the world to learn about this new system? So it's going to impact us on all levels and do something new. And the faster we accept this and add it into all of our learning uh, themes in, around the world, the more fast we will actually have a more greener world. So this is going to impact us on any level in L&D uh, is my guess. So, so, and this is just a model on knowing, thinking about, okay, we want to get rid of something. We want to add something new that are related to green in anything we do. And what we do is that we are now developing games because we are a little bit front runner here. So we are developing games. We are adding theory in. So you can actually drag that theory to any game that you play, allowing you to get a, a green model out of any game that you have played going forward. So even so if you play... If I understand your acceptance model right, you you are taking that break even point further left. Exactly. Where you have a, a quicker acceptance. Exactly. At Active, we don't fly. Uh, we don't go for physical meetings. Uh, we have certain rules if that, uh, that should happen. We have uh, done a code of conduct. Um, myself, I haven't purchased a, a single thing in a year. So it, it's like it's like a thing we can see coming. I've been asking, I've been doing some interviews over the last year. Every time I ask the last question, how will this impact, uh, how will the green agenda impact L&D? Uh, uh, and these are, I've been discussing with the most, uh, the biggest companies in the world. What they all say is, it's going to impact us. It's not clear how. 
All right, okay. And do you have already an ACTI template for the so-called green agenda? Yeah, yeah. These the, oh, we have right. we have we have games. Uh, these are just two of them, but we also added in theories that you can add to any game. So if you want to have it in, and we are actually planning on adding it into all the games we control, uh, so that we can decide decide that they should be part of. So every time you play a game, you get uh, a profile on your green choices. But we are also going to add into anybody, any client. If you have been having thousand people playing ten minutes on ACT in the last year, this is this is how you have polluted the world in the consumptions of energy on the service. So we are giving, we are calculating our own usage and we are adding that to the client and say, this is how it's good, how you have been contributing to uh, use energy on ACTI. So that can go into their accountants in terms of the green accountant going forward. So oh, we, okay. we are focusing very much on this. Nice. And uh, and I love that you can um, you know adapt and, and and change the cases. I think that's very good. Is that well maybe maybe why I'm so um, um, you're positive about that and also about taking new change challenges and 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 adapting Acti to uh, help in these new challenges we're facing. Is that, uh, I mean, you said everyone with an email can do it, but uh, I mean, now, now a bit more serious, uh, how long and how, what, what are the resources involved to, to change uh, a template? Uh, if you want to do like a, a full customized version, it's going to take uh, a week, uh, like uh, you have to sit there every day. If you're taking some of the small games, it's going to take half a day. If you just want to change the, the the lining, it's going to take you a day. So everything between half a day, depending on the length of the game and the content depth of your game that you are trying to translate or ch change, uh, up to a week or two, depending on how much, if you want to change the theories, you want to like start all over, it's going to change the movement in the games, the reactions, the speech bubbles from people. It's taking more time. Nice. Uh, but we have, we have, we have, a, a, we have 400 per year being built. So it is something that is happening out there. Oh, uh, absolutely. Nice. Um, Live, we're coming to an end. Is there anything yeah. I forgot to ask you? I don't know. It's one of these mean, mean <laughs> facilitator questions. Okay. Uh, we'll think about it afterwards and, and, we'll think and come about back. It afterwards and we think about it afterwards. So then uh, thank you very much everyone for joining. And let me throw in one thing. If you're interested in uh, active change and how active change works, uh, we at CLP have a mastering change open enrollment where we use uh, uh, active change and it's a taster session. It's free of charge. So on the 20th of September, and we do that in cooperation with one of our clients is Access Holding. And um, yeah, so if you would like to join, go on our website and look up for events and you can register uh, with us and experience Acti.